Welcome back to Cigar Time, your ever so friendly show all about premium cigars and smoking them. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, that's fine. Well, Thank you. Yeah, we're all glad to be back. Yeah. <laughs> that means we made it another week. True. Well, we welcome back Tim from Altatus, the iconic manufacturer of uh, so many different brands I can't even remember. Romeo, all. Monte Cristo, H. Upman, Don Diego, St. Louis Red. Louis Ray, Trinidad, 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 Trinidad. 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 Those of you who have been watching the show these past 15 years uh, have seen Tim before. For those of you who are new, you know, welcome in. You're going to get a good education. Hello, everybody. It's good, to, it's good to be back. Yeah. yeah. It's good to be back. It's I mean, be one back. thing that I did miss, uh, you know, with tragedy that happened last year was seeing all my friends. But you guys are special in my heart. One, because you, you know, one of our best customers. But you're also close. And I know you guys. Yeah. Personally. You know, so yeah, yeah. like, you know, we, you know, we travel together, eat together, you know. It's good, to be, it's good to see you guys, it's good to be back uh, on the set again. You know? Yeah, yeah, that is good to be back. Glad to have Yeah, I mean, you know, now that the, uh, the dreaded, you know, disaster we lived through the past okay. year is uh, starting to be in the rear view. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me say this real quick. If you guys, you know, people watching, if you guys don't know, um, these, these gentlemen have uh, a ton of stores. Some in Florida and a bunch of them out here around the outskirts of the city. Um, you should definitely check one out. Um, Support your local brick and mortar. You know, uh, come in. They have unique, a unique style. The way they do things, uh, the way their stores look. You know, um, they have something for everybody on the high end, on the low end. Yeah. You know, uh, they have great variety packs. So I definitely think it's something that you guys should check out. Uh, check out your local cigar, cigar. You know, my my favorite one is is here. Cigars here. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no. But Scott, I mean, they all got they all got great stories. Great stories. Excuse me. So you definitely Scott? check one out. Scott, sorry. Ah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Tim. No, no, I mean, I, look, I travel extensively yeah, you're uh, all and, over and, and see different yeah. cigar shops, but you guys definitely have one of, um, you know, the best chains, you know, for sure. And not just chains, but stores, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we, oh, we, we, each store is like a small business. I mean, it is. you know, we don't operate like some humongous, uh, uh, you know, our managers and store personnel tend to know the customers very well. But you know what? That's very true. But what I like about your store is that each store is different. Yeah. You know, and, well, I, and you can say that a lot of people, you can say that different places, but every store has its own, um, as eclectic mix, you would say. Yeah. You know, but but when you go, the, the stores are the same, but they're different. And that's one thing that I like about when you do. Some are bigger, some are smaller. Some are bigger, some are smaller, yeah. Right. And, and they each have a different personality. Oh, yes. you got that right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that goes for the customers as well, because yeah. as I travel amongst the stores, I see in the lounges, you know, different people at different locations. Some I, some I like more than others. I love them all. <laughs> some more than others. <laughs> but no, we, we're, we're always thankful for the support we've gotten. We've managed to get through this pandemic uh, and survive, which, you know, a lot of people didn't. And yeah. I, I, I mean, literally and figuratively. No, that's true. Yeah, I, um, well, yeah, we all had, we all lost loved ones. Obviously. Yeah, we I don't lost. want to go into detail, but we no, all lost. No, no, I know. You know, but, and, uh, and the damage it did to businesses, small businesses, especially like restaurants and retail sure. stores. I mean, I mean, it, we, won't, we, won't, we won't get into the politics yeah, yeah, of politics. everything. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, let's let's light him up. Yeah, let's yeah, light him up. Yeah. 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 He's about ready to pass yeah. out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I have to say I'm honored to be back with Paul. I haven't been with Paul in uh, quite some time. Yeah. It's so um, it's definitely be an honor to be back with him oh, and uh, you know work with him going forward. So um, how much did he pay you to say that? Um, more than you can count. More than. Mm. <laughs> what are we smoking? We're smoking the uh, Upman Classic. This is something we just released uh, in June. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were we were at the TV right. show in May. We did like an early pre-release. Just some people tried it out a little bit. You know. So um, this is uh, made in Honduras from our great guys over there. They do um, Romeo Reserve, Warhawk, St. Louis Ray, um, a lot of good stuff. Uh, you know, Warhawk got rated the number ten cigar last year mm -hmm. um, in the Corona size. So yeah, we got I a lot of that cigar. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff coming out. It of doesn't get it doesn't get the love yeah. it deserves. Well, you know, um, 
Can I use one of your letters? Let me use your letter, right? Oh, is it? I think. Um, yeah, it doesn't get the love it as love it deserves. I agree. But it's, it's a traditional uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut. You know, it has a nice sheen, nice look. Um, it's a Honduran filler and a um, Honduran binder. So most some of the product is uh, might be from a should, some of it should be, I believe, from Dan Lee, the area, uh, the Jamestown area, I believe, down there. And mm -hmm. also, uh, should, I believe some of it is from a La Flora area near the factory. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to confirm it. I don't have the book with me. I apologize. But, um, but this is actually only the third time I've smoked this. So um, let's see how it goes. Pretty mm -hmm. tasty from the get. Yeah. Right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cream over everything and spice on the front of your tongue. Yeah. What a great combination. Yeah, it is. Well, it's a good blend. Yeah, it is. I have to give the guys credit because um, we went down last year. We did like a, you know, guys, how we did the Connecticut tour. Oh yeah. So we did a thing called uh, Unwrapped in Connecticut that our guy Travis put together, and um, it was like the first time we've ever done anything because you know that's how it, our, our factory is on the other side of Honduras, closer to the El Salvador, Salvador side and closer to the ruins. Um, so when we went over and um, we started working, you know, messing with the tobacco and stuff, it's not like the big factory in, in TDG or, you know, going to Placentia or any, anywhere like that. But it's a cool little place, you know. They make millions and millions of cigars, and they do it with a little personal touch, I find. And the way they treat you is, like, uh, really cool. Yeah, well, that part of Honduras is, like, a whole different world from Dan Lee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never big, been to that part. Big, uh, big in coffee beans. Oh, okay. Like real big. Juan and Val and Valdez. one of the few areas that gets actual tourism. Yes, correct. Because of, of the ruins. Because of the ruins, yeah. right. Hmm. What's this cigar sell for? I don't know. I want to say uh, roughly, probably, in the, I guess like in the 850 range, I believe. Wow. Impressive. Okay. They're smoking the Toro size. Yeah. yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, um, again, I apologize. I thought I had brought the sheet with me. But I want to say, it, it, it's no more than I, you know, for sure. You know, Upman is usually priced just a, yeah. a notch in within the same realm as Romeo. Romeo, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But we always try to, like, um, the objective was this. So, like, if you look at Upman we had years ago, uh, you know, we had the, um, the gentleman, Ron Perlman, that was the Chairman's Reserve. Oh, I knew Ron. So we had the yeah. Chairman's Reserve. That was a great cigar. Oh. And that was a higher price Connecticut. So we felt mm -hmm. that um, when you look at the core line, this is in 1844. So when you look at the core line, we didn't have anything in the Connecticut line. The, the, the collaboration we did with the uh, group of the Maestro Connecticut, um, which was done with um, kind of with Raphael and the group of the Maestros, that was a little something different. Um, this is totally different. So this is more to go along with the core line. So you have the Cameroon, the Añejo, with a little bit of spice, mm -hmm. uh, the 1844 Classic now, and then the 1844 Regular. And the 1844 Regular received a high rating I want to say when it came out about six, seven, about six years ago. Yeah. Um, so it was like in the top fifteen at the time, top seventeen at the time in cigar aficionado. So yeah, they've all got some, you know, some decent uh, ratings. So with this classic line, again, it's more core. Mm -hmm. Just like you know, Romeo, you have Romeo eighteen seventy five, Connecticut, uh, Connecticut Nicaraguan, and then you have uh, Connecticut, which is the Real is Connecticut. Now you have the new Nicaraguan yeah. Real also. So, I mean, I'm sorry, I get a little confused sometimes, making <laughs> so many of them. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but, like in, but in Monty, like, same thing, you have Monty, Nicaragua, Monty, White, Platinum, and then Classic. Right. So, we're, you know, we're trying to build a core in those lines, and then you have your specialty or your collaboration lines outside of that. Right. You know. You know what? I got to tell you something. I don't know who amongst us beside me remembers the Chairman Reserve. I do not. I certainly do. Hmm. I remember the box that came in and everything. Yeah. And, and this is very, to me, very reminiscent of that. It's, it's interesting that you say that because that was a Dominican cigar and this is not mm -hmm. but it does have that kind of that creamy velvet that nutty, feel. nutty, creamy, you know? yeah, yeah. But more spice than you would find. Yeah, I don't on remember a, the chairman reserve having a lot of spice, yeah. Well, let's get everybody's first impression. Do, do you know that H. Upman was the first company to put cigars in a box? Box, yeah. yeah I heard that. Started doing it in 1844. <laughs> In big chests yeah. with their logo on it, which they used to ship back to Germany to give to their banking customers. And they sold them like that too, and they gave a big discount because they weren't weren't in wheels of fifty; they were box chests of a hundred or two hundred. Right. No. 
or something like that. I don't know about the discount, uh, yeah. but because <laughs> I think <laughs> at first they mostly gave them away. To yeah, banking trade. Customers. Yeah, trade customers. I think they ended up taking over because they they, they couldn't people couldn't pay for it, right? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they they were bankers and they had loaned money to a cigar manufacturing operation, and the people couldn't pay, so they took it. And then they had to figure out what to do with it. And then they decided they liked that better than banking. Yeah. Well, you know, the interesting part is like, um, if you go to the like middle, early part of the 19th century, you know, if you look at the brands that uh, Benji's father had, he had Monte Cristo, mm -hmm. A. Chapman, and Puerto La Nalga, you know, and I think maybe one or two other ones. It's interesting to have that in that time frame. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but can you imagine, you know, when you think back, everybody talks about ancient bottles of wine or ancient bottles of sherry and things like that, and and how the, the, the taste is captured from 100 years ago, although not always. But can you imagine what cigars tasted like 100 years ago? What the tobacco was like? Com even though the brands are the same names and everything, and even some of the same sizes, although much bigger today. Right. You, can you imagine? Because there's no way of knowing what they tasted like a right. hundred years ago. Right. There's no surviving tobacco yeah, that would have, still be yeah. good. They have a lot more science behind it now. Today. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I wonder sometimes if that's really good. Because know. sometimes the science is to keep them fresher longer. You know, make it easier to manufacture them. Burn better. Burn better, yes. You know, the theory and of binding. You right. Know. And everything there was done by hand. You yeah. Know, you know, yeah. so... I mean, as you see, or the way things are done, you know, sometimes by hand, maybe for a short run, right. is a better process, you know. And I think then, I mean, looking at, I mean, you hear people tell stories, but, you know, and Paul, you work with tobacco, the more you age it, the, age, the better the cigar is going to be. Of mm -hmm. course. So those guys are probably sitting on stuff. Yeah. You know, and not. For years and years. For years, yeah. right. Yeah. They didn't have to worry about, you know, the crop. The way they used to do it in Cuba. Right. Used to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, exactly. like. If you can use a crop from X, you know, yeah. and then use, you know, that's one thing I give a lot of the guys credit um, about the master blenders, not just with our company, but all the master blenders, is to make a cigar that's been around 10, 15, 20 years mm. to make it taste like the way it did yeah. in the beginning. And that, that's, that's an art. That's an art. You Consistency know, that's is an art. I mean, I, like um, Jose Sejas used to say to us, you know, it's your job to get it in the customer's mouth. It's my job to keep it there. Keep it there. You know, no, that's, <laughs> that's the truth. That's, I mean, that's, 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 that's a great way to look at it. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. You know, it is. I mean, um, because um, that cigar, you know, should be, you know, the, the same. But I often think, especially when you, you, when you read about how the factories were in Cuba at the turn of the last century and the, how the conditions were and how everything was hand bunched, you know, they didn't, they didn't have bunchers or anything. And, and how the tobacco was aged. I mean, how much different it is today. So you, you gotta wonder, you know, you, oh, you can read books about people's comments about cigars, and I have. And it, it sounds pretty similar to today. You know, they use maybe different ways of describing different things, but you know, you gotta wonder, what, what does it taste like? Oh, no. I, I think it would be m have more nicotine in it. I don't know if they would age it as long as they do now. Okay. Well, I think I they would they age it they longer. They did more of the aging at the retailer level. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because nobody right. was the buying it. The traditional way put them is down. The, the, the put store down. would yeah. put them down. Put them down. And then the they would select yep. for you yep. when you went to buy. That's where the English market selection came from. That's has. right. Interesting. They laid them down. The lay down. That's very interesting. It's funny because, you know, I find that, um, you know, you go to different places, like, you know, some people bunch by hand, some people bunch by machine, you know, because of the speed that you right. want to get and get the process going. Um, I find it interesting that when you go to, like, different places, like, you go to Nicaragua, you go to Dominican, wherever, you know, you see different, you know, practices. Practices, yeah. You know, even, even in the same country. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. get some people use teams. They have a buncher yeah. and a roller. Right. Yep. Some people don't use teams, and the same guy or woman does the, both does parts both of the parts. process. Correct. Remember, 120 years ago, 100 years ago, they didn't have draw masters. They didn't have draw. Yeah. I mean, everything was done by hand. The process. The supervisors would lean over the rolling yeah. tables and squeeze, squeeze the cigars yep. 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 to yep. see if there were voids or soft spots. Can you imagine? Well, can you imagine that today? <laughs> I remember one thing. One thing I learned when when Benji was working with us. He said to us one of the first meetings, like on the premium side, mm -hmm. he said that the most important guy in the cigar business is the supervisor that's watching the rollers. 
Yeah. Because, you know, they have a roller that has a bad day. Make it or break you. Yeah. They can make a bad cigar, you know? Did they have molds back then? Do you think? They had molds for a long yeah, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's really? where the, ev the evolution from wood to plastic came from. Mm -hmm. The original molds were all wood. And some of well, they I are most of the mostly now too. Well, most in the, the bigger life. factories, yeah, are it's mostly plastic, plastic. Plastic, yeah, it's more plastic is more durable, lasts longer. It's true, and and, and a big factory needs so many molds yeah, yeah. that handmade wooden molds would take forever and cost a fortune. Well, the interesting thing that I saw in a number of Cuban factories, especially in and around Havana, they had molds that weren't the traditional sizes. They had molds that were twice the size. Oh wow. Yeah, they were they they held twenty cigars, oh, yeah. and, and they had these mm. big presses that had sh uh, I guess sheets of something or another, so it compressed the compressed whole, whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they were not everywhere, and not not every every brand necessarily, but I did see larger molds, and I've yeah, never like, seen that anywhere else. It's like when you when you pack boxes, they use that weight to distribute the weight right. all over the press right. whole press. Right. And it goes down and, and it binds the boxes, like when you're shipping a box. Like when you're shipping boxes to somewhere like uh, right. Amazon or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, Rob, mm. uh, why don't you head this off? This cigar is very creamy. Mm -hmm. I, th I find it. And, and Paul, you're right. It's on the tip of your tongue mm -hmm. to you get that spicy yeah. pepper. It's a, it's, I think it's a black pepper. It's, I don't think it's a white pepper. No, it's black pepper. Black pepper. Um, it's, and it coats the rest of your tongue. With the creaminess. With the creaminess. Nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very good. That's I, my first impression. I, my first impression is exactly the same as Rob's, except I might be a tiny bit farther in than him. You're the power hitter. A little bit. Just a little bit. But what I find is that spice lays down just a bit, mm -hmm. and the creaminess comes up yeah. even more. Well, this, this is, is a well-blended cigar. Yeah. I mean, this is... I mean, this is a joy to smoke. Who blended this? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Raphael and Elmer Suarez worked on this. Is one of Raphael's project? Yeah. yeah, well, Elmer is the uh, head to back this guy. He's going to the group yeah. of the Maitros from the Honduras side. Okay. And, um, and uh, good, great, uh, great guy. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. really great guy. And um, so, yeah, um, he, if, if, he, if Raphael and him, they do most of the stuff coming out of Honduras, and the other, one of the other gentlemen so well. He, uh, he's also involved usually, but they got a good team over there. Like I said, I we went there last uh, February, right before uh, you know everything went left in the world, or right, however you want to say. It. But um, yeah, it was it was an experience. I mean, because um, like I said, it's, I mean it's small. Like I think it may, they maybe have four or five hundred people, yeah. and um, you know, but everybody's like it's like an oil machine, you know, mm -hmm. and you can see the product when it comes out. You know? mm -hmm. I gotta give Raphael a lot of credit. Not only is he a talented cigar person, for sure, and has blended some great cigars, he's also a pretty damn good chef. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's working on the cookbook. Did you see that now? Yeah, I saw yeah, that. he's working yeah, on the cookbook. Yeah, 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 it's funny. Yeah, he, um, you know, you meet people, some people just have a knack for, yeah. you know, certain things, and he, he's a, uh, you know, he, I call him bright lights, you know, because, yeah. I mean, he's always, he's always doing something. He's on. He's you on. know, he's yeah. always on, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And, um, it's like a renaissance man. It yeah, really is. he's definitely, yeah, definitely With is. Musical talents mm -hmm. and everything else. But I think, you know, all, all of what he does, I, I still maintain that he's, to me, I mean, and I, you know, I know, yeah. I know it a lot personally, but he's very, he's always very basic when we're talking to yeah, him. Yeah, he's down to earth. Yeah, he's very down to earth. Very down to earth. Yeah. He's very much down to earth. I mean, considering his position in the cigar world, yeah, I mean, he's sure. no no snobbery about him, no ego about him. I mean, he's a, a definite a personality. A few years back, we did an event with him in the Freehold store, yeah, and he hung out and drank and chatted with yeah. us until that's one the in the is. morning. That's the way he is. Yeah. That's the way he is. Yeah, yeah. that's the way he is for sure. Definitely. I mean, this cigar is great. <laughs> yeah, they did a good a, job. A testament to Raphael as, as a blend. He blended a lot of cigars on his own before he hooked up right. with Altatus. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And he had a very distinctive signature to his yeah. blends. He does. The things that he's done since he came to Altatus are very different. It's not like he just did more of the same. Continuum. No, no, yeah, yeah, for sure. Continuum, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Rob's heard me say this a hundred times. I, I mean, like, and I think 
most of the people I know, I think we smoke for ourselves, but we smoke for the people. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, as far as talking about it and how we explain things. Not we just smoke them so they don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. No, I understand what you say. But I think that that's one thing I think when he looks at he looks for, I mean, he smokes a lot of cigars, but he looks for perfection. And, and that's one thing, I mean, like, and I'll just say, he sent me some stuff over the, you know, 4th of July weekend just to, it's already done, but he just said, hey, try this, you know? Yeah. And I was like, man, this is like really, um, you know, and I, and I try to take my head out of it. I smoked it twice, you know, on, with different pairings. And I was like, you know, both times it was the same cigar, but it was different with different drinks. But uh, it was like, I, wait, I can't wait for this to come out, you know? And um, and I like the dedication that he puts into it. You can't, you can't. I mean, nobody outworks him. No, you know? no, no, no. Yeah, he's tireless. You're right. And he, he he's one of the more friendlier guys. You'll you know he he always has a good word for you. Yeah, for I sure. mean he's he's just a great guy. I like to see him on the show again. He was on the show before. A couple times. Yeah. 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 He was here with Tim. Yeah. 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 You know what? He's coming up this way. I think in the end of August. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, get maybe, him. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can uh, see if I can get you Wrangle him into it. Wrangle him in. Yeah, so I can get him in. He knows yeah. who we are. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. For sure. Wow. I'm just enjoying this regard. Yeah, me too, man. I think. Um, I just want to point great. out, Rob, this is Honduran. I know. It's Honduran. That's what I'm trying to grasp in my head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know how you I'm, <laughs> I'm not a Honduran cigar guy. But, but this is actually really good. Blender's yeah. art. Yeah. You yeah, don't, you yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You don't know. Also, one of my favorite cigars. I don't want to mention the name of the brand, but is a Honduran Puro. Okay. And and I really don't like Honduran tobacco. To me, it tastes too earthy, and too too much like uh, I don't want to say dirt, but it's it's just an earthy, grassy taste to me. Well, let me ask you this. But this doesn't. This doesn't have any at all. I've known no. you guys Nothing. a long time, and um, to me, it seems like I think it changed from how it was back in the early, middle 90s. Mm -hmm. And then like it seemed like maybe after they had the hurricane, things changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, just the whole concept of the way some of their taste stuff tastes. But, um, but there, I mean, there's some great stuff coming out of Honduras. I mean, look oh, at, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the CLE stuff, the uh, Aladino stuff. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole, I mean, I smoke, I, you know I me, mean, I don't. You smoke everything. This, yeah. is a, this is our segment on the show, but I smoke everything, yeah. you know. And because you have to see what your yeah I don't want to call it competition to see what your family members are smoking yeah, yeah you know what I mean or producing you know but you know you got to compete against your family sometimes but um you know I think that uh, one thing the uh, what happened like tra the pandemic happened last year is that it shows how small of an industry you are oh yeah but how great of a family we really are yeah yeah you know? yeah everybody there was a I lot mean, of mutual support yeah yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean yeah. it's real it's it's not exactly a at, at the level we're talking about here, it's not a cutthroat business at all. Mm -mm. I mean, the primary firms in this industry, of which are nine or ten, I mean, they all kind of get along and support each other. You know, Ma Macy's doesn't talk, talk bad about gimbals and, you know, it, it, it is amazing. Right. But gimbals. again, you said it, it's a small you industry. Remember gimbals? I, I remember gimbals, I was a kid. Gimbals? Gimbals. Yeah. They haven't Mace. been in business for years. I know. Like Macy's and Gimbals. Didn't I, you, no, I remember classic. them. Didn't you, see, didn't you see that uh, Santa Claus movie with uh, a very young, uh, yes. a young what's her name, who who uh, who floated away there? Yeah, Natalie yeah. Wood. Natalie, Natalie Wood. Wood. Yeah, yeah. One of the most beautiful women ever to walk yes. the face Ed, of the earth. Edmund, yes. Edmund Gwynn. Well, not I I was Santa Claus. John Payne was the guy trying yes, to get. Yes, I get know. it, but. They they been Natalie, 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 that was the famous Natalie. thing, Gimbals and Macy's. Know. Well, you know what's interesting? I'll just say it's not to change the subject, but to me, when Macy's brought Strawbridge's, I thought Strawbridge's was a better concept than Macy's. It was a higher-end concept. Yeah. It was higher-end, yes. And out of both. <laughs> well, I go back to Snellenberg's. Now I've heard Klein's of it. on the yeah. square. And I go back when, when, when they were called one and threes, not five and tens. <laughs> one and three, one wow. And three. Or EJ Corvettes. EJ Corvettes. I remember. I that met Gene yeah. Perkoff. Yeah. That's interesting. Amazing. I'm really, I'm actually really enjoying this cigar. Yeah, this is good, man. I mean, for us to start off with this, to come back, you know, uh, I thought this was a great pick. Uh, we just released this in, in June, yeah. so I thought it would be a great segment to lead into. Yeah. Um, so you guys see this around at the local stores with some promotions. Um, but I will tell you this: we're going to run uh, with the stores up here. We're not the stores in Florida, but we're going to run a really special deal coming out probably August, September with a unique grill. So be on the lookout for that. A grill? Yeah, it's kind of like a mini green egg. You mean a barbecue grill? Not a grill grill. No, not a grill. <laughs> no, no, not a grill grill. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a grill. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna rough off a grill. You call it an egg. 
You ever seen the green yeah, egg? Yeah, the green egg. The green egg. Yeah, we're not. This isn't like a, this isn't a green egg, but green it's, egg and ham. It's no, a, green egg is a kind of barbecue. Yeah, it's a charcoal. Very barbecue. good. But this is an electric one. It's very but good. This, I mean, this thing like it will take both of us, probably three of us to carry. This thing is probably oh. about this big. Oh my god. Yeah, so we're gonna wrap that off. So this is like an expensive thing. Oh yeah. That's it's cool. A, it's actually based on a Japanese prototype. The yes, oh, the original okay. green eggs were Japanese. Do you remember? Um, so you know how we did before we did the TV. Yeah, yeah. We did this. We did that. So this is in that concept. So oh. I don't. We didn't do the egg last year because the grill last oh, yeah. year because of what happened. So we'll do the grill. Cool. This summer. So I like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess we should uh, start the mosey down do the road. And, uh, this is uh, to me. This cigar is very consistent. Yeah. The entire way. Um, a little bit backing off on the of the pepper, like you like That's you said. That's the way it should be. But yeah. the it continues to coat the back of my tongue with creaminess, and it's very tasty. It really is. I, I like the cigar. I give it a nine two five. Okay, I'm for you, that's great. I'm Especially it's Honduran. Sp for being a Honduran cigar, it's lucky it's not a seven. You didn't penalize it for the price, right? <laughs> no. A seven, no, out, of <laughs> <laughs> seven <laughs> out of a hundred. Seven out of a hundred. No, oh my God. it's a nine. It's a nine two five. Uh, it's a very good cigar. Well, I'm I'm in the same place as Rob. I'm thinking nine two five. Uh, I also think once the pepper backed off a little bit, mm -hmm. it stayed very consistent. One thing I'm noticing that's a surprise to me for a cigar of this type is I'm feeling it as a pretty high nicotine cigar. Yeah, I would say that. Not that it's mm -hmm. strong. No, it's not. but there's some nicotine going on behind there. Uh, unlike a typical Connecticut wrapped cigar. I like it a lot. So I the give retro hell is very interesting. Nine two five. Yeah. Real nutty. Yeah. Almonds. Uh, yeah, almonds. That's exactly right. This is a cigar you can smoke anytime. Yeah. You can smoke this first thing in the morning, as you probably would. You can smoke it last thing at night, which you probably would. <laughs> yeah. And, and maybe one or two in between. Yeah. At, at least, least one or two. one or two. It, it's it's a great cigar. Uh, and I won't get into the price. Thank you. We won't get into a fist fight over the price. Thank you. Because as you all know, I... I, I thought you weren't going to get into it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, but I'm, just, I'm, I'm going to just yeah. outline yes, it. Yes, thanks for not getting into it. The price does matter. <laughs> and I'm going to give this a 9.5. Ah. Because not only do I love the cigar, I also like it's easy on the wallet. No, I didn't get into yeah. the price. For I guess one second, I want to talk about construction. Do the draw quick. and smoke production of this cigar is mm -hmm. phenomenal. Perfect. It dropped inch and a half ashes when I made them. Yeah. Yeah, it's Everything about the construction of this cigar is pretty much perfect. I just want to remind everybody, right after the conclusion of this show, our Cigar Time Outlet show yeah. will be following. Save tons of money. Uh, we now have the entire block from 7 to 8. Oh, wow. Every Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah we moved nice. the Saturday show to back to back with this show. Nice. Uh, we want to thank Tim very much. He's going to be back next week with another legendary brand. Legendary brand. Legendary yep, brand. Legend. So stay tuned. And don't forget next week. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for, for now. Everybody. Smoke off.